Hi, thanks for joining me for today's devotion. Our Bible passage is from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. When you were in school, you learned about adjectives, and you learned about degrees of comparison. These rules of grammar come in handy if you ever want to brag about something. For example, if you'd like to brag about your cooking ability, you might say, I am good. I'm a good cook. Good is an adjective. It's a good thing you know about adjectives. Otherwise, all you would have been able to say is that you cook, and that's not saying much. Let's say you want to take your bragging to the next level. If you want to let people know just how good you are, now you need to use degrees of comparison. You have to move to the comparative degree. You use a comparative to compare yourself to someone else. I'm not just good. I'm better. I'm a better cook than my sister. Now you're really cooking. But keep in mind that the comparative degree is limited. You can only use it to rank two things. It's only about you and your sister, and you're better. But if you want to show how you rank in a field of three or more people, the comparative doesn't work. Now it's time for a superlative. I'm not just a good cook. I'm not just better than my sister. I'm the best. Best is a superlative adjective. You're not just better than your sister. You're better than Rachel Ray, Julia Childs, and everyone else. Of course, just because you say it doesn't mean it's true. Doesn't mean anyone's going to believe you, but that's how the superlative degree works. It lets you rank something or someone first above all others. Some words are automatically superlative. Take the word unique. If someone is unique, you don't have to say that she is more unique than someone else or the most unique person in the world. The word unique already says that. It's automatic. In God's dictionary, the word love is automatically superlative. When he tells us to love him, which is the first commandment, he's telling us to love him most of all, more than anything else. Superlative. We don't use the word love that way. We can say we love art and we love reading the morning paper and we love our family. And it's okay for you and me to talk that way because we've all agreed that love is a flexible word. Just don't expect God to talk about love the same way we do. When it comes to loving God, we need to remember that he comes first. So also our verse says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. What this is saying is, don't love the world first. You can love things in this world, art, reading the paper, your family. Just don't put anything ahead of God. But who of us can say that we do this? Each of us has something in this world we tend to love more than God. Some of those things are obvious, things like money and health and family. Some aren't so obvious. When we can't let go of anxiety or worry, we've let the source of that anxiety and worry take first place in our heart. We would never say we love sickness or that we love a job that stresses us out. But when those things are all we can think about, isn't that a kind of love? All of us have broken God's first commandment. We need to listen to God's warning. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. If that were the end of the story, we would have to go home sad. But listen, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. How can sinners do the will of God? Well, there's only one person who has done the will of God perfectly, and that is God's Son. Jesus was perfect. Every single one of us struggles to accept God's will for our life when that will involves pain. But Jesus looked at his impending cross and prayed to his Father, Your will be done. Lots of preachers through the ages have said, Turn the other cheek. Jesus actually prayed for the forgiveness of those who had unjustly crucified him. There was no craving, lusting, or boasting in Jesus. Not one sin stains Jesus' perfect record. From manger to cross, he loved God, 
to the superlative degree, and he is your substitute. God has given you Jesus' perfect obedience as a gift. Now when God looks at you, he sees only Jesus, the flawless one. Because of Jesus, he sees you as someone who loves him to the superlative degree. He sees you as the one who does the will of God, and because of that, you will live forever. So forget boasting, whether it's about cooking or anything else. You know who it is who really deserves all glory and all praise for all eternity. The Lord is the one who loves us to the superlative degree. He deserves all our glory and all praise in Jesus' name. See you next time.